Well, if you are relatively young and healthy and have an advanced science degree with a love of space, you could be exactly who NASA is looking for. Right now, the agency is looking for new astronauts to be part of a year-long Mars simulation. Just four people will be chosen to test out living on the red planet. It is part two of this experiment. The first crew recently passed the halfway mark inside the 1,700 square foot habitat where they have braved Mars harsh conditions on simulated Mars walks. They're growing their own crops. They are collecting data for NASA. So let's welcome in Suzanne Bell with NASA's Behavioral Health and Performance Lab at the Johnson Space Center. Suzanne, so great to see you. First of all, how is the first leg of this mission going so far? Uh, it's amazing. We are learning so much every week. Um, what we're really trying to understand is the trades we'll have to make uh, in terms of resources when we put people on Mars someday. And so just we're learning so much every day from our first mission, which is currently at its 240th day that the crew has been in isolation and confinement. Oh, wow. So actually over the halfway mark. So we're talking about 1,700 right. square foot capsule or facility here. I want to talk about what you, what you look for, but let's just focus on this first crew. What are some of the challenges that they've had to deal with, you know, both physically and mentally? Well, the whole point of this project is to create a situation that's as Mars realistic as possible. So there are all sorts of conditions that we put in place, such as um, constrained uh, food and, and limited food supply like we would expect to be able to put on Mars. Um, there's limited and specific exercise equipment. There's living in a small space with three other individuals and doing complex tasks as well as usual tasks such as uh, daily maintenance or um, doing things like growing crops. Uh, everything we would expect for a Mars surface habitat mission. All right, yeah, I feel like that small space with other individuals would probably be the biggest hurdle for me. Uh, Suzanne, this is obviously a big commitment. We kind of went through uh, some of the criteria at the top of this, but who really is the ideal person for this type of mission? Well, to make sure that our data is really informative, we want um, candidates to be as astronaut-like as possible. So we use many of the same criteria that are used to select astronauts. So for example, we're looking for people with advanced STEM degrees, age range of, of 30 to 55 for this mission, um, English speaking so they can speak with the crew as well as um, mission control and send messages to mission control. Um, they do need to be a US citizen or a permanent resident. And then um, another uh, possibility possibility is if you don't have an advanced, advanced STEM degree, you can be a pilot, uh, similar to what our astronauts are able well, to have. Very, very cool. How significant is a study like this, Suzanne? I mean, do you think humans will one day be able to explore or even possibly live on Mars? Absolutely. And it's really studies like this that help us prepare. And so this next crew and the current crew, they're really pioneers in helping us understand um, how we can push the, the limits of, of human spaceflight and, and be able to become an interplanetary species someday, hopefully. I love it. Very, very cool. Dr. Suzanne Bell, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.